It was a conservation success story that dreams are made of. White rhino were on the brink of extinction when the radical new conservation strategy of relocation, private ownership and hunting saw them rebound from 450 in the mid-1960s to over 20,000 by 2012. Even CITES, the International Wildlife Trade Regulatory Body, commended South Africa on its achievement. In 2012, there are 20,000 white rhino on the African continent. That is a great conservation success story. And we commend South Africa in particular, which has over 90% of those rhinos uh, within its borders. When the number of rhino poached spiked from 13 in 2007 to 87 in 2008, alarm bells sounded, but no one was prepared for the slaughter that was about to be unleashed on South Africa's rhino population. The trade in rhino horn was banned by CITES in the mid-1970s and eventually even removed from Chinese traditional medicine pharmacopoeia in 1994. Yet traders were still selling horn openly. Numerous samples were collected from rhino horn dealers in Southeast Asia and tested at the veterinary genetics laboratory in South Africa. Of the 30 samples tested, none were rhino. Bovine, water buffalo and sicka deer featured prominently. The laboratory findings were not surprising. The high cost of rhino horn makes it unaffordable to even middle income earners. And the way in which these dealers handle the product certainly doesn't suggest a commodity more valuable than gold and platinum combined per gram. Swiss-born investigative journalist Karl Amann has been studying the illegal wildlife trade for over 20 years. Based on the research and the travel I've been doing and the shops I've been visiting, there's a definite trend from health to wealth, meaning the health component of traditional Chinese medicine, in my opinion, is a lot less important today than it was two or three years ago. The guys who import the horns and sell them, they have moved on to creating new markets, new demand. One of the first ones I documented was jewelry items. This is wood, but the, the rhino items look very similar. These things are just put on a scale, so it's $100 per gram. The same goes for this karma bead, which come in various different sizes. Then when I started asking question, why am I translating so on, yes, libation cups are coming back in fashion. So, you know, it's pretty logical if you look at this, that uh, cups can be cut out of the inner core. But then going back to Vietnam and the one street, which I'd known for some time as being big on rhino horn and ivory, uh, what had changed there, instead of these shops being closed down after I delivered evidence to a wide range of players from Interpol to traffic to CITES to the Hawks, I expect that something will be happening, that there are now more shops. The window shutters are now open. At the previous time I was there, they were all down to just let a little daylight in. They're now all open. You can see the displays. Uh, they brought all these bracelets over uh, to me. They put them all on the scale and uh, weighed them all without any, any concern. And new shops having opened outside the village. Uh, so the indication was there's big money being made, lots of more people wanting to get in on the big money and less enforcement and less concern about enforcement. Down here, everybody talks about all kinds of approaches to deal with the issue at the supply end, how do you get the poach or not the poach. I'm convinced with the prices where they are now, uh, Africa is too fertile as far as poor people willing to risk their life for 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars for a horn and you will not stop it here. So it has to be the demand end uh, where the governments in charge pretend they're efficient, they know what they're doing, they are not corrupt, we're talking China, Vietnam, so let's try to take them by their word, expose them for this stuff, name and shame them. To me, that's the only way you're going to get a real serious reaction. 
estimated to be worth 10 billion US dollars a year, the illegal wildlife trade is one of the largest illegal activities in the world, ranked alongside drugs, arms and human trafficking. There appears to be little international political will to confront end-user countries that flout trade regulations and continue to trade in endangered and threatened species. Perhaps the time has come for conservationists to openly question countries that are not honoring their commitment of enforcing illegal wildlife trafficking laws. There certainly seems to be reluctance on the part of international bodies to denounce them. We have the knowledge and expertise to once again rescue the rhino from the spiral to extinction. But the time has come to stop talking about what we should be doing and focus on what can be done to make this a reality. <laughs>